Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of our die sets. This is die number 1266, the Lorna label pop-up, and you can check out all of our die designs at karenberniston.com. Okay, check your stash because I did do a Lorna label pop-up as a licensed design that was retired in 2016. Now we've brought it back. It has been updated, so it is a new, easier glue-in assembly, as well as a little bit of changes to the decorator pieces. My late grandmother, Lorna, was the inspiration for the name of this die set. She was a World War II Navy veteran. Okay, the first assembly I'm going to cover in the video is just the standard assembly. I'll make this cute little happy birthday card. You'll see how very generic and easy this die set is. Then for the second assembly of the video, I'll amp things up a little bit and I'll make a double Lorna label pop up along with kind of a floating floor action and some suspended 3D butterflies. There are six pieces in this die set to make that generic pop-up plus some decorator pieces. There are instructions on the back of the packaging as well. Your minimum card size to hide the pop-up would be about four inches wide by about four and a quarter on the height. I've decided to go a little larger. I'm making a five by five square card. So I started with a piece of cardstock, 10 inches long, five inches wide, and scored it in the middle for folding. And then to that, I just went stash diving and found some fun birthday paper. So since the Lorna is a glue in design now, you can go ahead and do your decorating of the interior card before adding the pop-up. And so for me, I'm just adding a little decorative strip of a coordinating pattern paper, and I'm just going to decorate the bottom half of the card for now. The Lorna label does not need a heavyweight cardstock. Medium or lightweight is fine. I'm using a medium weight cardstock, and then my die cutting machine is my Spellbinders Platinum 6. Any of your major die cutting machines will work with our die sets. The die will have done some scoring as well as cutting. So the first thing I'm going to do is just find all those score lines. The one at the top is a tapered tab that folds to the back. I sometimes find it easier to kind of break the fold by folding towards myself and then reversing it. You can also use a bone folder to make a crisp fold. The next fold is right at the top of the label. Then at the bottom of the label, there's just one fold that brings it up. You can kind of see how that back label is going to sit. All right, there are two small tabs on either side of the label. Once again, I'm kind of breaking the fold by folding it towards myself, but then I want to reverse it. And these ones were being a little tricky for me. Something about the grain of the paper, they just didn't want to fold right on the line. So those little small tabs, it really does help if you can fold them right on the line. And that's why I generally recommend a smooth cardstock for this die set so that you can really see the fold lines and make sure that you're folding exactly where they are. There is a fold up the middle of the box at the bottom. Once again, I'm going to use my bone folder for that one. And then the last fold is a tapered tab at the bottom. So once again, just breaking the fold by folding towards myself and then reversing it. If you have ever assembled our little labels pop up, then the Lorna is going to be very easy for you because it is the same assembly. So after finding all the folds, I'm going to reverse them again so that the piece is flat. I'm just going to take a pencil for the video and show the four tabs that are going to get adhesive. So it's going to be the two side tabs, the little small ones, plus the upper tapered tab and the lower tapered tab. Now I like to reverse this long fold through the middle of the box just temporarily because it makes it easy for me to get it aligned directly over the fold of the card. And I'm just centering it side to side and just having that fold sit right over the fold of the card and then making sure that I don't let it move, I'm going to add some glue to my two small tabs. And then what I wanna do is I wanna kick those under and press them to the card. So just making sure that my center fold is not moving, I wanna get those two tabs attached to the card. So my box fold right here is still directly over the fold of the card. And now I want to attach the other two tabs. So again, in the flat position, I'm going to add my glue. I'm using Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive in my fine tip bottle. We sell both of those items on our website. All right, glue on the tabs. And then what I wanna do is keeping everything flat, I want to kick those tabs under and glue them to the card. Okay, so just making sure that it stays flat and straight. I'm going to give that upper tab a good press and then get the lower tab kicked under and attached to the card as well. So I'm doing that completely in that flat position. 
okay, because I have this completely flat and some of the folds reversed, I wanna check a couple things before I close it. The first one is this tip of the label up here at the top. I wanna to make sure that that's able to come forward, that it's not trapped in the opening. So make sure that's coming forward. And then the box at the bottom, remember I temporarily made that center fold kind of a valley fold. I want that to be a mountain again. So as I start to close the card, I should see the box coming forward. I should see the tip of the label at the top free and coming forward. And then I can give everything a good press in the closed position. And that is it. It is ready to decorate. So very easy on the assembly and completely generic. The die set includes decorator pieces. So I'll go ahead and die cut those. And then I like that I can still flatten the pop-up for decorating. There is a fishtail banner that fits really nicely on that bottom box. Optional, of course, but it fits there. There are a couple of labels that can be layered together or you can use either one independently. And then that is sized to fit on the pop-up and leave a little shadow all the way around. Now, one thing about adding that label in the flat position is it may trap your little tip back in there again. So just make sure before you fold your card that that tip is coming forward. I assembled a lion from our monkey and lion die set and then had him holding a birthday candle from our birthday candle add-ons set. Any of our small animal sets would work wonderfully on the Lorna label, but you're also going to find that's a good set if you're a stamper because so many stamps, either greeting or imagery, would fit perfectly on that label. From here, I'm just decorating, added some more of those papers at the top of the card, and then for the greeting, I went with our happy birthday and happy birthday shadow. The oval is in the Lorna label set as well as a die that will cut four hearts, too big and too small, and those layer together nicely. So I'll add a layered heart to the bottom of the card. The oval is where I will sign it. I assembled a couple more birthday candles from the birthday candle add-ons and then just glued those to that bottom box. And then on the other side, just another one of those little layered hearts. Okay, my favorite way to design card fronts is just to take my leftover materials and repeat elements from the inside. The way I figure it, with pop-up cards, they're mostly going to be displayed open. That's where all the magic is. So just having a simple lead-in is a great way to design the front of the card. We do have a new word set called Word Set 18 Connectors, and I use that to get the Wishing You A. Okay, so here's my finished card. It measures five by five when closed. It folds down really flat, so I don't anticipate any additional postage. I would just use an A7 envelope. So that is the standard assembly of the Lorna Label pop-up, and now let's talk about how you might amp it up and double it. Okay, the secret to a double Lorna Label is to put a fold in your card and cut through two layers. So looking at the die here, I'm going to add some removable tape up into the label section to hold my cardstock on. And then I would not recommend using a heavyweight cardstock for this because you're gonna try and cut through two layers. So I would go 80 pound at most, maybe 65 pound, 80 pound, doesn't matter. I'm gonna put a fold in my cardstock and then I'm going to place that fold on that long fold that's in the die set. So let me just freeze there for a second so you get a really good look at where that fold line is. By adding the tape first, I can just reach behind there and press the tape to my cardstock to hold it in place so that it doesn't move because you do want that to be straight. Now, since I'm die cutting through two layers, I'm gonna roll that through my machine and then just immediately roll back through. So I give it a double hit to make sure that it can get through both the layers of cardstock. Okay, it cut through no problem and now I just need to get that tape off. Okay, so opening up that piece, I now have a double pop-up, and that could be installed in the card right now. However, I decided that instead of having a solid label on the back one, I would like it to be a label frame. So the first thing I'm going to do is just use my pop-up die again over, with my leftover cardstock, and as long as I have enough to cover the label area, that's all I need. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an extra little label frame to go over the top of the pop-up label frame. So once I've die cut that pop-up piece, again, it doesn't matter if I got everything because I only want the label. So I'm going to take my scissors and isolate just the label. And then now when I cut the center, the window out of my pop-up, I'm going to layer that solid label on top and cut them both at the same time. 
and that way I know that they're going to match. Okay, now why do I need two of them? It's just because I wanted to have an extra label frame to go over the top of the fishing line that I'm going to put across the label. So if I've got two layers, then I can sandwich the fishing line between them. And if I cut them at the same time, then I know they're going to match. Okay, once again, I'm cutting through two layers. So when I put that through my die cutting machine, I'm going to roll it through and then immediately reverse and roll back through again, just to make sure that I get through both layers. Okay, so getting my die off of the piece and removing those inner labels, I basically now have two stitched labels and a label frame that will match my pop-up perfectly. Okay, in the double pop-up, just like the single pop-up, the tabs are in the same location. I'm gonna do the little small tabs at the side. There is the two folds at the top, that one that goes around the label and then the tapered tab at the back, they all fold away from me. Then I can flip the piece around and do the same thing on the other side. So the little small tabs fold away from me, up at the top folds away, and that little tapered tab again folds away. So everything's a mountain fold on those ones. The only things that are valley are where the labels come up. Now I've decided to use the bottom label as a floating floor, which means if I add some L supports, I can suspend some butterflies on those L supports. So I need to do that before I get this inside the card. Okay, first thing first, I'm going to add the decorator stitch label. That's one of the ones that came out when I was die cutting the upper part. And then I just decided that I would use the corner of that decorative stitched label as where I was going to put my L supports. Now I could use an X-Acto knife and cut myself a slot, but I can also just cut from the side, cutting myself a narrow little river, and then snipping out the excess. So basically just the width of a piece of cardstock. You know, it doesn't have to be really wide, just enough that I can slide a piece of cardstock through it and it can easily open and close. There is nothing magical about that location. I just chose that for my card, but you could put those slots anywhere on that bottom label, add some L supports, and then you can suspend items. For my upper frame, I want to put some fishing line across the opening where I can suspend a butterfly. So I'm doing that with just some miniature glue dots, putting one at the top of the frame, one at the bottom of the frame, and then just stretching that fishing line across and into those glue dots. And then I'll just trim off the excess. And I'm not worried about those sticky glue dots because that's why I cut that extra frame and I'll just glue that over the top. For card size, I started with a piece of cardstock five inches wide, 12 inches long, scored it in the middle for folding so that I have a five by six top fold card. And then I went ahead and added a panel of cardstock to the back. When I'm trying to open and close 3D butterflies, I think a stiff card just makes it work better. For installing this pop-up inside the card, it is exactly like when I was doing a single. It's that long fold that goes right over the fold of the card. I can kind of temporarily make that into a valley fold as necessary to make sure that I get it directly over the fold. But what's going to glue down is going to be the small tabs on either side of the label. So I can add some glue, kick those under, get those attached to the card. Okay, just holding it flat and making sure that nothing moves, then I'm going to add my glue to my upper tapered tab, and then once again, kick that under and attach it to the card. So installing, even the double, just gets installed when the card is flat. All right, one half of my label is attached. Now I can just flip the card around and repeat that exact same process. So holding everything flat, I add my glue to my little small tabs. I kick those under and attach them to the card. Okay, then the last tab to get attached would be the upper one. I add some glue to that one, keeping everything nice and flat. I just kick it under and attach it to the card. My base cardstock is a little shimmery, so I'm giving that a little bit of time. Okay, once again, I gotta look at the points of my label, make sure that those are coming forward, that they aren't trapped in the opening, make sure that my center is becoming a mountain. Once everything's coming forward as the card closes, then I can give it a good squish in the closed position, and there's my double pop-up. Okay, now I need to put L supports through those little slots. So what I chose to do is just cut pieces of leftover cardstock to a quarter inch wide by two inches long. And then I just fold it under a little foot. And that foot just needs to be big enough for a miniature glue dot. Or you could use glue. I just think a glue dot is easier. Then I'm going to slide that L support in while the card is open. 
and I'm looking to match the foot at the bottom with the same angle as the other part of the pop-up. So here's what I mean by that. I'm going to slide that in and I'm just going to rest it there. And then I'm going to look at it from the side and see if my L support looks like it's matching the other parts of the pop-up as far as angle goes. So then it just kind of operates in tandem with the other parts of the pop-up. Because you can certainly change that angle. You can have that item leaning forward. You can have that item leaning back. I'm looking to have it basically just match the rest of the pop-up. Okay, doing that again, a little glue dot on the bottom of a fold underfoot, and then slide that in, and it's attaching to the bottom of the card. So the L support is attaching to the bottom of the card, and I'm just looking to have the angle match the other. So see, that does not match at all. That would be way leaning forward. So I need to scooch that back until it is in a position where it pretty much matches the angle of the other pop-up. Okay, so that is completely customizable. You can certainly explore other angles for different effects. But what I'm looking to do is have my butterflies just basically pop up straight up with the rest of the pop-up. For butterflies, I'm using our Butterfly Collage Add-ons set. And I've already cut a ton of butterflies, including some of the 3D ones. So for one of the 3D ones, I did the slotted butterfly out of white cardstock with double-sided adhesive on the top. And that way I can slide that slotted butterfly behind my fishing line and then let the adhesive suspend that butterfly to the fishing line where the slot is just to the right of the fishing line. It would work if the slot were just to the left of the fishing line. It doesn't really matter. I just want to be able to put the other butterfly through that slot. So I wouldn't want the fishing line going straight through the middle of the slot. Okay, now I have to pick one of my slotted butterflies to attach to that sticky one thereby trapping the fishing line between the two layers. Now that particular butterfly was cut out of a material called a shimmer sheet. I just found that in my specialty cardstock drawer. But I also use some glitter cardstock, some shimmer cardstock, so it doesn't really matter. I've just chosen some fun materials. I fold under one of the wings so that I can get the notched butterfly through the slot, seat it into the slot, and then unfold the wing on the back side. And now I have that 3D butterfly that will open and close with the card and is suspended on the fishing line. Okay, so let me show that 3D butterfly a little closer. You just fold under one of the bottom wings, you take the notched butterfly, you get through the slot until the notch is seated at the top, and then you push the butterfly through and unfold the wing. And then that locks those two pieces together as a 3D butterfly. Then I'm going to add a couple of miniature glue dots to one of my L supports and then just press that butterfly to it so that the middle part that is opening is to the right of the post. So in other words, it can open when the card opens and closes. And then I just have to check that it will find the flat position, that it stays in the card when the card is closed and that nothing is catching. I can also add a 3D butterfly up at the top. Again, just looking for a location where I can attach the back portion of the butterfly to the pop-up, but so that the middle portion is out over air and that it can open as the card opens and closes. That die set also includes some flat butterflies, both side view and front view, and I'm going to attach a couple of those to the pop-up butterflies in the front. So just basically making myself a butterfly collage all over this pop-up. I can even add butterflies down here to the front face of the lower pop-up, including a 3D butterfly. So all sorts of things I can do. Now I did something different with this butterfly over here because it just kept catching. So I made that into a triple. So to make a double butterfly into a triple, find the notched butterfly and fold it in half. So I put it through the normal way, but then I just folded that notched butterfly in half. And then I'm going to cut a second notched butterfly and fold it in half. And then I want to get that through for the other side. So once again, I have to fold up the bottom wing so that I can get it through the slot. Then once it's through the slot with the notch seated at the top, then I can unfold the wing in the back. And then now I've turned that into a triple butterfly. So there may be times on a pop-up where a double is catching because it opens so wide, but if you turn it into a triple, it doesn't open as wide. 
To finish out the card's interior, I went stash diving to find a piece of patterned paper that would match, and then I just used thin strips of glitter cardstock over the seams. For a greeting, I'm using Hello out of our Word Set 6 Summer, which I cut out of both a glitter cardstock and black, and then I'm layering the two together, slightly offset to create a drop shadow. Okay, finishing out the interior of the card, I just added an oval and another butterfly. And then for the front of the card, just layering some of those labels, that fishtail banner, one of the triple butterflies, and then several of the flat ones. And I decided to mat that on a slightly larger black piece of cardstock and then attach that to the front of the card. My finished card measures five inches by six inches, top fold card. It actually folds surprisingly flat, but it is a little rigid because of the extra layer of cardstock I put on the back and all of the stacked up layers inside. So I probably would add that extra ounce stamp to it. I love to end assembly videos with some inspiration from our very talented design team. A super cute baking inspired birthday card by Jen Webster. Then a cute St. Patrick's Day card by Lois Bach. Here's a double Lorna by Nikki Foden in a terrific theme. I love the colors on this bee themed card by Sandy Diller. Here's a beach themed card by Sandy with a surfing monkey. And then a lovely birthday card by Suzanne Smith. Another card by Suzanne, this time with a cute giraffe. Sue Small Crider made a double Lorna and then built a teacup pop-up on top. Frances Byrne made this adorable Easter card using the Lorna label, and then she made a double Lorna, turned it so that it's a side fold card. The Lorna label pop-up is available now at a lot of your favorite local and online retailers, as well as from our website, KarenBerniston.com. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com where you can purchase these dies as well as find links to our other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.